Hi, and welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at equations that have fractional exponents. We're going to find the derivatives of those equations and look at the direction and concavity of their graphs. Let's start off with x to the 2 thirds. Keep in mind that the domain of this function is all real numbers. We're going to take the first derivative, which works out to be 2 over 3x to the 1 third. Now if I set the first derivative equal to 0, it would never equal 0, but it will be undefined. It's going to be undefined when x is 0. Since 0 is part of the domain of the function, we're going to consider that a critical value for this graph. We're going to plug in a point to the left side of 0. I chose to, choose, um, to plug in negative 1, and I got out negative 2 thirds. Since I have a negative slope, it's telling me that the graph is decreasing between negative infinity and 0. On the other side of 0, I plugged in 1 and got out positive 2 thirds, which means I have a positive slope on the interval from 0 to infinity, so my graph is increasing. It also means that I have an absolute minimum point at 0, 0. Let's take a look at the graph on our graphing calculator. So I plugged in x to the 2 thirds in the grapher, and I'm just going to use a standard window to graph it. So you can see that on the left side the graph is decreasing, and on the right side of 0 the graph is increasing. And at the point 0, 0, we have an absolute minimum point on our graph. Let's go ahead and look at the second derivative graph. For our second derivative, I got negative 2 over 9x to the 4 thirds. Again, the derivative cannot equal 0, but it can be undefined. It's going to be undefined at 0. So I plugged in a point at negative 1, and I got out negative 2 ninths. And I plugged in a point at positive 1, and I also got out negative 2 ninths. The second derivative determines the concavity of the graph, and since both sides are negative, it tells us that it's concave down everywhere. Again, looking at our grapher, you can see that concave down on the left side and concave down on the right side of 0. So that seems to verify what we have here and we have no inflection point. Let's take a look at our next graph. We have 3x minus 1 to the 5 thirds. Again our domain is all real numbers. Our first derivative works out to be 5 times 3x minus 1 to the 2 thirds. And that one can equal 0. It's going to equal 0 when x is 1 third. And that's our only critical value for this graph. So we're going to plug in a point to the left of 1 third. And I chose to use 0. I got a 5, a positive number, which means I have a positive slope. And on the other side of 1 third, I chose 1, which is about 7.9, also a positive. So that tells me that this graph is increasing from negative infinity to positive infinity. So again, just because a graph has a critical value does not mean that it is a turning point for the graph. You have to check both sides to decide whether it changes direction or not. For our second derivative, we get 10 times 3x minus 1 to the negative 1 third. In this case, the graph will be, or the second derivative, will be undefined at 1 third. So we're going to check and see if that is a point where the graph changes concavity. So checking a point on the left side, I used 0, and I got out negative 10. That tells me the graph is concave down from negative infinity to 1 third. On the right side, I chose 1, and I got out a positive, approximately 7.94. So that tells me that my graph is concave up from 1 third to infinity. So that means that we do have an inflection point at 1 third and 0. 1 third was a point where the second derivative is undefined and it was still going it still end up being an inflection point so you have to check both where your derivative is zero and where your derivative is undefined let's try another one we have x to the two-thirds minus four all squared again our domain is all real numbers for our first derivative we get four times x to the two-thirds minus four over three x to the one-third in this case, you have an undefined value at 0, 
and the first derivative is equal to zero at negative eight or positive eight. So we have three critical values and we're going to check between and beyond those critical values. So I chose a point at negative 27 for the first derivative. And I just chose that because it turns out that negative 27 is a perfect cube. and I didn't have to estimate my answer. But you could have plugged in any number beyond negative 8. So anyway, I got a negative 20 over 9, which tells me that my graph is decreasing on the interval from negative infinity to negative 8. At negative 1, I got a positive 4, so I can conclude that I have the graph increasing from negative 8 to 0. At positive 1, I got out negative 4, so I should expect my graph to be decreasing from 0 to 8. And at positive 27, I got out a 20 over 9 positive, so it should be increasing from 8 to infinity. So we're going to also look at this one on our graphing calculator. Okay, so I put the equation into my grapher, and I'm going to change the window on this one a little bit so we can see what's going on beyond 8 and negative 8. So um, instead of just zooming, let's go to Window, and I'm going to make our x number line go from negative 15 to positive 15. And I'm going to make my y-axis go all the way out to 20, so from negative 10 to 20. And it graph. And from there you can see that on the left side here it's decreasing. And then from negative 8 to 0 it's increasing. From 0 to 8 decreasing. And beyond 8 increasing. I'm just going to hit trace to show you that that low point is at negative 8 here. So it'll blink on it. There it goes. So it's a low point at negative 8, 0. It's so an absolute minimum point. And then at 0, we get out 16. So that's going to be a relative maximum because these endpoints, these ends go up forever here. And then at positive 8, we have 0 again. So you have two low points and a high point. So at negative 8, we get at 0. At 0 is 16. At 8, 0. So we have a relative maximum at six, 0 and 16. And absolute minimums at negative 8, 0 and positive 8, 0. Okay, we have one more example. Um, this is x squared minus 4 to the positive 2 thirds. Again, our domain is all reals. Our first derivative is 4x over 3 times x squared minus 1 to the 1 third. And our critical values are 0, where the numerator is 0, and negative 2 and 2, which is where the denominator would be 0. So again, we're going to check between and beyond those critical values. So I chose negative 3, and I estimated it. So it's negative 2.34, which tells me that the graph is decreasing from negative infinity to negative 2. At negative 1, I got a positive, so it's going to be increasing from negative 2 to 0. And at 1, I got a negative, decreasing again. It's time from 0 to 2. And then um, beyond 2, I chose 3, and I got 2.34. So it's increasing on that interval. So let's take a look at this graph on our graphing calculator. Okay, so we have x squared minus 4 all to the 2 thirds on the grapher. And I'm just going to use a standard window, so zoom in 6. The standard window just gives us um, an x-axis that goes from negative 10 to 10, and a y-axis that also goes from negative 10 to 10. Now, you can see here where you have this point at negative 2, there's a sharp turn there. That's where your denominator is equal to 0. And over here at positive 2, we have a sharp turn. And at 0, we have a smooth turn here, but it's still a high point on the graph. So let's verify. It. So at negative 2, we get at 0. At 0, we get around 2.52. And we'll figure that out in a minute. And then at 2, we get at 0.
So turning points for this particular graph. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, when we plug in 0 into the original function, we're going to get negative 4 to the 2 thirds, which is that 2.52 that we saw in the grapher. And then we have absolute minimums at negative 2, 0 and 2, 0. Okay, that's it for this uh, lesson. Thanks for tuning in to Demystifying Math.